it's time to start getting into the details of principal components analysis. In the beginning, we're going to talk about eigenvalues. But first, we'll just review from last time. We learned that covariance and correlation matrices are symmetric. That symmetry implies that their eigenvectors are orthogonal. And we also remember that eigenvectors for any matrix will always be ordered by the magnitude of their eigenvalues, the largest eigenvalues corresponding to the first eigenvectors. We also saw just a kind of general description of what principal components are. The first principal component being that direction in which the variance of the data is maximal. The second component being orthogonal to the first and being the next direction of largest variance. The third, fourth, fifth, etc., would be orthogonal to the first, however many are before it, and maximizing variance in whatever's left. And principal components give us this new orthogonal basis where the coordinates of the data points are now completely uncorrelated. So now we get to this fact that the eigenvalues actually tell us the amount of variance in each direction. So here, when we had this picture, those corresponding eigenvalues, lambda 1 and lambda 2, will tell us how much of the variance of the data is in each of the new directions. This is the same as saying it's the variance of the new variables v1 and v2. And when I talk about the variance in each direction, this is really computed in the same old way. We're just using the coordinates of the data in our new basis. So if that's not clicking, let's back up a, sec a second and just here's some two-dimensional data. I have two variables, x1 and x2. What's the variance of x1? Well, it's the sum of squared distances of to the origin of the x1 coordinates, right? So it's like projecting the data onto the axis for x1, which is really just setting all the x2 coordinates to zero. It's dropping x2 out of the picture. So now I have a number line of data and I take the sum of squared distances to the origin because the data is centered. And the same thing is true for the variance of x2. If I project the data onto the x2 axis, that's the one-dimensional variable x2, and I would look at the sum of squared distances to the mean uh, or the origin. And now we can define total variance, and the total variance is the sum of the variances of each variable. Okay, so if I take the variance of x1 and add it to the variance of x2, that's how much total variance I have in my data. And once we change to the principal component basis, we have new variables, v1 and v2, which would provide another way to look at total variance. But the cool fact is the total amount of variance is the same no matter what orthogonal basis you consider. So it's a fact that if I add the variances of my original variables, I will get the sum of the eigenvalues. And the reason is, it's just the sum of the squared distances of each point to the origin. And so Pythagorean theorem tells me that it doesn't matter what kind of right triangle I draw, uh, the hypotenuse of that triangle is going to be the sum of squared, well, the square root. So the square of that hypotenuse will be the sum of the squared lengths of the legs of the triangle. And that total amount of variance will be the trace of the covariance matrix. Now, if you don't remember, it's okay. The trace is a matrix function that adds the diagonal elements. So if you recall, in the covariance matrix, the diagonal elements give us the variance of each variable. So if I add those up, that's really what this expression here is pointing to, just adding up the variances of the variables. Of course, in the covariance matrix, those off-diagonal elements give me the covariance between each pair of variables. 
So if I have this expression for total variance, I can also start to talk about proportion of variance. So the proportion of the total that would be directed along, or you might say explained by, the first principal component would be lambda 1 over the total. And likewise for the second component in our two-dimensional picture here. And this uh, truth holds up in general when I have many components, each eigenvalue gives the variance of that component. The sum of the eigenvalues will give me the total variance, which is also equal to the sum of the variances of each of my original variables. And in general, the proportion of variance that's explained by, say, the ith component is lambda i, that's the part, that's how much variance is explained by the ith component, over the sum of all the eigenvalues, which will be the total variance. And often we're more interested in looking at the cumulative proportion of variance that's explained by, say, the first k components. So I would add up the amount of variance from i equals 1 to k. This would be the total variance explained by the first k components divided by the total. So let's get some practice with this. And now let's take another look at zero eigenvalues. What would it mean in my earlier picture if lambda 2 was equal to zero? Well, it would mean that variance along that direction is exactly zero. Well, how do I get zero variance? I can only have zero variance when I have a constant vector. So that means that all of the coordinates along that direction are exactly the same. That also means that those original variables x1 and x2 are perfectly correlated. The data is essentially one-dimensional. So V1 alone explains 100% of the variation in X1 and X2. When I say it explains 100% of the variation, it means I get a perfect representation of that data using just one coordinate along that V1 axis. 100% of the information means that all of the relationships between data points will be perfectly preserved. All the distances from the origin and from each point to every other point. Now this will only happen, honestly, when you've made a mistake, when you've put um, the study time in hours and the study time in minutes into the same data set. Or if you put for rectangular fences, the length, the width, and the perimeter. Right? That's where you get perfect multicollinearity. But it's very common to have small eigenvalues. And when eigenvalues are close to zero, it means there's not much variance in that direction. And so you won't lose much by ignoring or dropping this component. Dropping components implies an orthogonal projection onto a subspace that's the span of the principal components. And that is how we get to dimension reduction. So I'm going to show you the same exact visual I showed in a previous video. But this time, there's going to be a slight difference because rather than having a zero eigenvalue where the data had perfect multicollinearity, I'm going to change that a little bit just so that there was a high degree of multicollinearity. Once again, I have this three-dimensional data plotted, and when I rotate it on its side, I see that it's no longer forming a perfect plane, but I also see that there's really not much variance in that direction. And I think you could agree that if I were able to take, you know, something of a steamroller and flatten that data out along that direction here, I, I wouldn't lose that much information. I would still have a very good picture of how each point was spatially related to every other point. 
And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to draw the principal components. So now okay, it looks like the first principal component would go in this direction pointed by my mouse. The second principal component is orthogonal to that one, looks like it goes in this direction. And then the third principal component would come out of the computer screen or down below this, this surface. So the third principal component is along that direction. And so if I were to drop that component out of the picture, what I do is I orthogonally project this data onto a plane, which is kind of like giving it a rolling pin right here on this angle. And I'm left with this two-dimensional projection of the data. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, and this is something that always comes up as a question, is how do we determine how many components to drop? And that's a very good question and one that doesn't have an answer. Mo you'll find that most of the questions you ask in data science don't have one best answer all the time. If they did, we would only teach you that one thing. But it's kind of the fundamental theorem of data science that nothing works best all the time. A very common way to start is to plot the eigenvalues. So here it's just the eigenvalue along the y-axis and which component it is along the x-axis. So the first eigenvalue is a little more than six, the second eigenvalue is about four and a half. And as the components go on, the eigenvalues should certainly decrease because we order the components by their eigenvalues. And we're looking for an elbow in this curve, a place where the kind of the return and variance you get for using an additional component starts to diminish. So, you know, in this graph, someone could make a sound argument for taking the first three components or the first four perhaps even the first five. But somewhere in here is the elbow of this curve. Now, it's been my experience with very high dimensional data, you don't get such a nice elbow. Uh, you get something that looks like a spaghetti arm and you're really left guessing where to put that um, cutoff. I'll show you some examples, or one example in particular, at the very end of this class that I hope will make you realize that each additional component you add just gives a slightly better resolution of the data up until you have a complete perfect example of your data. And all of these are approximations to it. And the approximations get better and better as you move on. So there's gonna be a trade-off here for the dimensionality of the data sometimes. And sometimes you're going to find there's really not much difference after you add an additional component. But it really depends on the application and what you're trying to do. So again, there is no answer to this question of how many components do I choose. It will be different in every situation. Even the way you choose it will be different in every situation. 